Pain relievers, hey, over-the-counter and prescribed, something lots of people use frequently. And that brings us to this week's case. It involves a young, young woman, a high school student at Stauffer High School in Arizona. She was there, and the high school had a very strict, no-tolerance policy with respect to drugs, any kind of drugs, including prescription drugs, including over-the-counter drugs. Well, one of her classmates reported that she, the accused, was actually dispensing pain relievers in the high school. So, a search took place. The high school administration searched her locker, searched her pockets, and then the assistant vice principal sent her to the nurse's office where she was ordered to disrobe, take her clothes off, and shake out her clothes and make sure that she did not have any drugs. None were found. Well, needless to say, this high school student was very distressed by all of this. And she then brought suit through her parents against the high school and against the school district. She contended that her civil rights under the federal law, 1983, were violated. And yet what happens here is that a high school, a public high school, has to guarantee to its students a modified form of constitutional protections. Now, high school students are not adults, but for all intents and purposes, a high school is an arm of the government, and the Constitution is about you and the government. It's a protection that you have against the government in any way invading your rights. Now, high school students aren't adults, so their rights are somewhat modified. Nonetheless, they certainly have a right against an unlawful search and seizure. She sued them. Case went forward, and it went all the way up to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court decided this case, and they looked at several things, and they heard several arguments. The reason it got up to the Supreme Court is that at the lower courts, they decided in favor of the high school. They said that there was probable cause for the search by virtue of the comments that had been made by another student at the high school. Well, anyway, goes up to the U.S. Supreme Court, and the U.S. Supreme Court decides this case. The factors they looked at were what kind of harm would there be if these drugs were there in the high schools. It turned out they were painkillers, over-the-counter, something like a leave. And the judges looked at this and they said, hey, you know, there's not going to be a big issue if kids are using over-the-counter pain medication. Secondly, they looked at what the school did. They said, hey, they got a little carried away here when they ordered to the nurse's office, asked her to disrobe, and basically did a strip search. That's over, above, and beyond what should be done in this kind of a situation, given the nature of the accusation that she was simply giving out pain relievers. In view of all of that, the court said, hey, High school, you did not have a justifiable reason to engage in this kind of search under these circumstances. All right. So what happens to this case? Well, the other thing that the Supreme Court said is that the high school was entitled to qualified immunity. Qualified immunity, that meant that they have some immunity. And by having some immunity here, she, the young woman who was so upset, does not collect any damages because the school has an immunity against a suit for this kind of damage. All right, so that's what happened here. A lot of time and effort, a lot of money spent, basically with a decision that said the school district did wrong, but you don't get any damages. Maybe not what you would expect to have happened, but that's how the law worked in this case. And every week, we tell you how the law works so you can make the law work for you. I'm David Allen.